You know, Lillian and I have been very fortunate to have had a long relationship with the UNC basketball program and Coach Dean Smith and Bill Guthridge. But we always had this fear that when Dean Smith left and Bill Guthridge left, the basketball program at Chapel Hill might not continue to enjoy the level of strength. But Roy Williams came along and has taken the basketball program to an even higher level, mainly because Dean Smith had left such a solid foundation on which to build. I was not around when the public school forum was started and did not affiliate with the forum until the 90s. As a matter of fact, I'm turning my papers over, I have continued the process of turning my papers over to the Southern Collection at UNC Chapel Hill. And I've been going through a lot of folders, and one folder I picked up has consisted of the letters written by Senator Bass Knight appointing me to the forum board. But some of us always thought that when John and Joanne left, the forum might not continue to be the wonderful, strong, innovative organization we had come to appreciate. But then Keith Poston comes along. And Keith is the right man for the right time for the right organization and has taken the forum built on the foundation left by John and Joanne to an even higher level. As I stand here and think of the future of the forum, I am convinced that many of our brighter days are still ahead. There is no question based on the current environment we need the public school forum worse than we have ever needed it in North Carolina. Now, I'm an optimist. I do believe in the long run, cooler heads or smarter heads will prevail. But we have a great challenge ahead of us if we are to maintain a strong public school system. To be able to think that I have earned the privilege of receiving this award in the name of a man I came to appreciate and enjoyed thoroughly working with in J. Rob, person of Jay Robinson. I didn't meet Jay until the 90s when I was back in the Senate and he was at the university. And our beginning wasn't all that happy either. Dennis Winner, senator from Asheville, had come to me and said, you know, we really ought to change the name of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to the University of North Carolina because it is the university. I'd like you to sign on with me on this bill. Well, without thinking and looking back, it was kind of an idiotic thing to do. I put my name on the bill. Jay Robinson found out about it. And the next time I saw Jay, he was all in my face about that bill. And he said, if you don't take your name off that bill, I'm never going to work with you again. Well, we worked it out. The bill didn't go anywhere. But that was my beginning. And Jay and I developed a very strong relationship and worked on many issues after that time. I wish I could share some of the other things that, that went on. But here is a man that I hold in very high esteem because he was an innovative leader, a visionary leader, a strong leader, and a caring leader. I'm at that age now where once in a while, I ponder 
my life after death, not in a morbid way, but more in have I done anything that will earn the kind of existence once my body is no longer here? The kind of legacy that's left by Jay Robinson who will live on for infamy, whose work while he lived was in such high quality that we'll all continue to not only reference it, but learn from it and gain determination through it. Will that be my life? I don't know. That I cannot control. What I can control is what I can do now. Lillian and I have been very blessed with three wonderful children all of whom have been successful, two wonderful granddaughters, both of whom have been successful. And I wonder sometimes how we got here because I'm not sure, as I looked out when I was younger, I could see being here in this place at this night receiving this award. So our goal is not to take for ourselves, because we've been blessed in so many ways, but to give to the next generations. Ms. Mitchell has become one of my favorite principals, because she is one of the dedicated leaders heading up a school, the same school today in which I worked as a young researcher at Duke University in 1966, Lowe's Grove. I have a high regard for this principle. Don Stedman, a friend of mine, says, give me a great principle. Even with weak teachers, I'll give you a great school. Because a great leader will help weak teachers become strong. Ms. Mitchell has done that since she's been at Lowe's Grove. When I talk to young boys, I let them know that you must have a vision. You must have a dream. And you dream to be whatever you want to be. And I share with them that that's how I survived growing up in the South. Reality, if I had faced it alone, would have destroyed me. But my dreams kept me believing that just over the hill, there is a greater opportunity. I just have to keep going for it. And so one day, a young boy walked up to me and said, Senator Lee, how did you become the man you are today? And how does a man like you become a man like you? And I sat him down, and we talked about hard work. And he said, yeah, but you, don't, you didn't grow up poor. And I shared with him that I did grow up poor, that there were many Christmases when we didn't have anything like I'm sure many of you can relate to here. He said, but you never failed. And I share with him, I have failed. That's after three years in college trying to become a doctor, I was kicked out because my grades weren't good enough. But I did go to another college and I talked my way in. And that's when I knew I would be a politician. <laughs> So Lillian said, she doesn't think I know what my next move is. I know what my next move is. It is to keep working with principals like Ms. Mitchell. 
it is to now focus in on elementary schools because I found another principal by the name of Matthew Hunt who is principal who has been transferred from a high school to an elementary school in Durham called Merrick Moore Elementary School. It's not the worst performing school in Durham, but it's the second worst. And I was in the school yesterday, spent about an hour with Mr. Hunt, and we're going to put together a kind of a reading mentoring program I'm planning to identify every church around that school, and I'm going to ask every minister to come meet with me, or I'm going to go meet with them. I think it is indeed time for the churches to open those doors, call on their members to engage with the schools, and become mentors with young boys and girls, especially young boys. Now, I'm going to... So as luck would have it today, two members of my golf club came to me and said, we've been hearing you talk about reading. What if we all pooled our resources and we bought a whole bunch of books and each child in the third grade by the end of this school year was handed a book? Now, I won't go into all the details because we've got to work out all the details on it. I called the principal. There are a lot of people out who really want to help. There's a couple here tonight. I'm not going to identify them, uh, but a young couple, um, well, they're a couple, who really has been very generous with, with the Institute in helping me uh, raise the kind of money that I've needed to run this Institute. These schools are really in need of help, not just money, but individuals who have talent. I would be remiss if I didn't tonight challenge you in this room, some, many of you, some of you are already doing it, to engage and offer yourself up to do one thing, Go to the school, offer to adopt one child, go read with that child one day a week or a month or whatever you can afford. It could make all the difference in the world. Now, Keith told me that I could make an acceptance speech, but not a speech. <laughs> so I'm going to end by saying this. There is one group that really concerns me, and I've got to find a way to make a difference in their lives. And that's black boys. Our black boys are struggling in our schools and are the, are the lowest performing group in any school one goes to. It makes people uncomfortable when I tell the truth, but that is indeed a fact. But let me say something to you. These are some of the brightest boys I have ever met. They can learn, but you know what they are missing are relationships. I have mothers come to me constantly saying, can you find a male who will come and be a friend to my son? so he'll have the relationship with the man. I don't think we could restrict it on ethnicity. I don't care whether the mentor is white, black, Asian, Indian. I think it's important to have a relationship. And so from this point on, for whatever time I have left, to earn the privilege of being given this recognition tonight, I will continue to work in middle schools, raising as much money as I can. I will continue to start up programs at elementary schools because I think if I find the right principal, I can do it. I will do everything I can to motivate churches to become more engaged in education in communities and in schools. 
and I will focus on trying to find ways to get the boys in high school to understand that their future is not likely to be on the football field or on a basketball court. Their future has to be based on academic attainment. And I know it can be done, it is being done, and with the right principles, we'll continue to do it. Keith, Mr. Chairman, and all of you who have shown up here tonight, do me the honor of making me continue to understand that there's valuable work that we can continue to do. There is still so much to be done, and I'm so happy that I've been blessed with the health and the strength to be able to continue to do it. Thank you so much.